This video is brought to you by PureVPN, the easy and effective way to keep your browsing data secure. Use the code DISCOUNT10 for 10% off your first purchase. So the iPhone 6 was brought out in 2014, but despite being 3 years old, it is still my favourite iPhone that Apple have ever released. So let's take a look at why. So there's a number of reasons why the iPhone 6 is still my favourite iPhone of them all, even after the release of the iPhone 10. And first of all is just the design, because it was the cornerstone for all future Apple designs. The design of both the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6s really brought together what Apple used to be about. It's sleek, stylish, and brings together the best of what you'd expect from a phone. The all aluminium construction and the rounded edges all around the phone give a less grippy feel than the iPhone 5s, but it creates a more premium feel. Because the design from the iPhone 6 hasn't really changed through the 6s, 7 or 8 that much, it still feels like a newer flagship rather than a phone from 2014. And this is down to its weight at 129 grams, which is comparable to the iPhone 8's 148 grams. And personally, I find this to be the perfect weight to body ratio. Surprisingly, this phone is actually just over a millimeter thinner than the iPhone 8, which is down to its lack of a glass back. But of course, being made from metal, you don't get wireless charging. The screen of the iPhone 6 is another aspect that hasn't really changed through the iPhone 8, but obviously with the iPhone 10, that is a bit of an upgrade. And the fact that it hasn't changed is a good thing. The screen itself is a 4.7 inch IPS LCD panel with a resolution of 750 by 1334, giving the phone a DPI of 326. And the screen we see here is perfectly acceptable in today's standards, and in terms of color representation, it is great, and the same goes for viewing angles. It's not the brightest compared to the iPhone 8 or the iPhone 10, but it is good. And if you're the type of person who loves the force touch as a third dimension of movement, then the iPhone 6s would also be another great option. Performance is another place where this phone surprisingly holds up really well and doesn't disappoint. Inside we have the Apple A8 CPU paired with one gigabyte of RAM. Whilst it may not be the highest spec sheet we've ever seen, especially with that amount of RAM, it does perform really, really well. And personally, I use the iPhone 6 with the latest developer software on board, which unusually actually seems to improve the performance through each minor upgrade. In general daily use, this phone fits my uses perfectly. It's smooth, snappy, and shows only minimal signs of lag. Multitasking between different social networks and Spotify works perfectly well, and swiping between the control center is fluid with no stuttering or lag. Occasionally, under a bit more intense load, the phone will just hang for a few seconds before continuing, but I've only actually had this happen in situations where I'm pushing the phone. The fingerprint scanner is also another place where this phone doesn't disappoint. It is surprisingly snappy, and I find it to be the perfect speed between viewing the notifications on the lock screen and unlocking your phone. Now, I have the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus here, and there's one thing I want to just talk about here, because the iPhone 6 Plus, being the bigger model with a higher screen resolution, actually performs a lot worse to the 6. So here's some speed comparisons between the iPhone 6 Plus on the right and the regular iPhone 6 on the left. Both of these were in aeroplane mode with Wi-Fi on, Bluetooth was off, and there were no apps running when I was doing what we were doing. see the animations on the 6 Plus are a lot more stuttery and that is something that I don't really understand because this phone honestly would be the perfect phone for me to use but because of the stuttering that it gives I find myself using the regular 6 over the 6 Plus. Unfortunately the cameras are another place where this phone falls behind in terms of performance. On the rear we have an 8 megapixel f2.2 camera with a focal length of 29 millimeters. Whilst the photos when you take them in the camera app may look decent, as soon as you start zooming in you'll notice a lot of grain and the photos themselves just don't look all that good. They may be okay for social media sharing or snapchat, but honestly I found that the camera on this phone really is lacking and that's something where the success comes to improve it or even the iPhone 7 comes to make it a hell of a lot better. 
In terms of video quality, we can shoot 1080p at 60 frames per second on the rear and 720p 30 frames per second on the front. We've got an NFC chip for Apple Pay, which I find myself using a hell of a lot now, and a lightning port and as well a headphone jack. You know, like, like one connector you need to use that nice pair of headphones that you've got without a parade of dongles. And finally is the battery life. So inside we've got a 1810 milliamp hour cell, which unfortunately on the regular six drains pretty quickly and doesn't charge up all that quickly either. Luckily the six plus, despite its flaws in terms of software, does last a lot longer on my daily usage, which is why I find myself using this phone over this phone. But I'd always recommend keeping a portable battery on you or even a charger. So what is the bottom line then? Is this phone really worth buying after three years of it being out? Well, quite simply, yes. This phone is and has been my daily driver for almost two months now. And if you're looking for a fairly cheap phone that will perform well, look good, and be able to cope with moderate to heavy use, then this will definitely be the phone for you. Whilst its cameras may not hold up to anything like today's standards, the iPhone 6, to me, is still my favorite phone from Apple. It was the cornerstone for the basis of the iPhone 10, the iPhone 8, and the iPhone 7, and was a real turning point in the development of iPhones. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in my next video. PureVPN is the simple and effective way to keep your browsing data private. With dedicated antivirus and malware softwares built in, PureVPN adds an extra layer of security and encryption to your browsing experience. Compatible with over 20 kinds of device and with browser add-ons with 750 active servers, PureVPN definitely gets a recommendation from me. Use the code DISCOUNT10 for 10% off your first order.